Hello everyone, this is Carrie, and I'm often asked what supplies I use, so I thought I would show you, share with you today what I use most often. So the first thing I'm showing here is my, it's hard to tell because it's just white, but it's uh, Ken Oliver's Best Craft Mat. I've used several different craft mats because I like how you can just um, squirt out some paint directly on it and then wipe it off. This one's kind of rubbery, it doesn't slip. Uh, and it's uh, pretty much anything that I've gotten on it, any glue, whatever, has been able to wipe away really easily. So of course this is the professional 100% pure acetone remover that I use to remove factory paint. It's uh, I've pretty much used different kinds and this isn't any better than any other, but that's the brand that I'm using. And of course I often use cotton pads and of cotton swabs with that and there were also some micro brushes in there I'll leave that in the description box below I always wear at least one glove um, I would like to use two gloves <laughs> but it's difficult to paint sometimes with one on my right hand but it's good to prevent adding um, extra oils and uh, smudges to the dolls so everybody knows Mr. Super Clear. I love this because it's UV cut. It has the best surface to use. It's most common, but it is highly toxic and um, in, in, inexpensive and difficult to find. The next best thing that I found is this Army Painter Anti-Shine Varnish. It doesn't have the UV cut, but it, it does have a surface that's similar to Mr. Super Clear. It is just as toxic. Uh, it's less expensive, easier to find. You can find it on Amazon, but uh, it doesn't have that UV cut, so I usually only use it on the body. This is the high gloss varnish that I use. I love this. This was a gift for me, and um, I've used. I used to use a regular gloss varnish by Liquitex, and it wasn't as good as that one. Uh, it's much glossier. So I use them depending on what look I want. That was some craft paint. I use that very often, some white craft paint. And this is my mask that I use. Just make sure when you're using those varnishes that you're wearing this mask or wearing a mask, but I use the 3M. This is a uh, little wristband that's used by makeup artists to clean off brushes. Since I use a uh, powder, my pastels with brushes, um, I. I use that to kind of clean them off and I wear it on my arm and I stuck a paper towel in there where you would normally have a brush but it's a makeup artist brush cleaner and it's just kind of you just rub the brush on it and it takes off the residue so you can kind of change the color without having to wet the the brush since I use dry materials that's helpful and the links to these are in the description box below um, but these are some of the paintbrushes I use. I use most often for little detail work. I'll use these for blending. They are round brushes that I've cut down to little stubs that are kind of like stencil brushes. They work really well for small area blending. And then I use these flat brushes. Uh, one of them is angled, but the other two are just regular flat brushes. And these are good for just doing some small area contouring, shading. So I have use a variety of different brands, but I do like the ones that are a little bit better quality. So I purchased mo most of these either at like dickblick.com or uh, on Amazon or Cheap Joe's Art Supply, or Blitzy.com. So these are some other detail brushes. This is one that I use for very small uh, paint. And then this one um, is a round brush that I use for glossing the eyes and lips. So for larger area shading, like on the body, I use just a variety of these craft brushes usually angled ones work best for that. I keep one for each color. And then this is also my my favorite to add blush. This is just a wet and wild eye eyeshadow brush that I got from the Dollar Tree. So 
So for adding some dots, like highlights in the eyes, I use this little dotting tool. I use a pair of tweezers for adding the eyelashes. And to remove little dust particles, I often use this X-Acto knife. It's really good for removing little dust particles that may appear on the face up. So again, that dotting tool is for when I add the highlights to the eyes mainly. It has different sizes. I have a couple different ones. Oh, I was also showing here that I use toothpicks for tiny dots for tiny highlights. And then sharing with you these micro brushes. Again, I'll leave the links to all of these products in the description box below, but I love those micro brushes for tiny blending. This is my favorite pencil sharpener. It's the Prismacolor Scholar. I've tried several different kinds and this is my favorite. Sometimes I struggle with a pencil that has the lead broken throughout. I've been struggling with that a lot lately because if you buy them in a store, uh, sometimes that store has just dropped those pencils and the lead is broken throughout and there's not much you can do at that point. But we, you know how we really need to keep a sharp pencil point. So this is another Prismacolor pencil sharpener that is, is pretty good but I prefer that Scholar one over any. If I'm having trouble with the lead breaking, I move over to one of these. This is by Coom. It's a two, two size sharpener, and this is just kind of a generic one, I believe. But I, I move to those just to be a little more cautious with preserving the pencil and doing short little uh, sharpenings. <laughs> just trying to preserve the if I if it's breaking and breaking and breaking as I'm trying to sharpen it I'll use just move to one of those and they work well too I just don't like how it doesn't case in the um, shavings so here are some of the products that I use most often as far as pencils I use mainly Derwent watercolor pencils and my black the ivory and the black are my very favorite that I use most often and then I love this little chocolate colored by Faber-Castell Aquarelle and then I often use this Caran d'Ache white and then for colors what I use most often there's this sort of a, a chocolate gray by Caran d'Ache and then this crimson red is my favorite for a lot of different areas. Uh, any, anytime I need to use red, it's sort, it's sort of the perfect pinkish red. And then some darker tones I get with this Faber-Castell watercolor. And then I also love this Derwent watercolor terracotta. So those are my very favorite colors that I use. And then, uh, oh, also this Copper Beach by Derwent. So on to my erasers. I use this Mono Zero by Tombow, and it's just a tiny micro eraser that's retractable and refillable. Love it. It comes with some refills as well, but it's really great for smaller areas. Um, then I use this sharpenable Faber-Castell pencil, pencil sharp, or eraser. It looks like a pencil with a brush on the end. I love it because you can just brush away the shavings. And I use this for when I really need to, it, it, you, it, you need to use caution with this because it can erase down through the sealant that you're using. It's a harder uh, eraser, but it, it does work well for small areas if you really need to get something off of there. I'm also showing, as I'm spilling everything all over the desk, I'm also showing that uh, it's a Derwent pencil extender. I use that like crazy. Oh, this is my Faber-Castell. This is a softer eraser. So if you're gonna use, sorry to jump back, but you can use the white one if you're needing to erase a lot more. It's it, it And if you need to be more gentle, then you'd use the pink one. Back to the pencil extender. I try to use every little bit of my pencils. So I often use these pencil extenders. Sometimes you'll see me not using them <laughs> because I'm just kind of like too lazy to pull it out and change the color in it. But uh, I really try to preserve my pencils. 
and use them down to the very nub. So see that white is so short. So I can use it as, as long as I can still sharpen it, I can stick it in that extender and it works very, very well. So this is a long video, I'm sorry. So these are the colors that I use most frequently. I'm not gonna go through each one, but outside of those, the, the, the colors that I went through, I love to use all of these. <laughs> so for a variety of eye colors, it's good if you're going to first start out, it's good to have like a dark purple and a light purple or like two of each color, like a darker shade and a lighter shade. And that'll help you like blending eye color and lip color. So I would recommend like a good uh, black and white and then a, uh, a variety of colors in with one dark, one light. So it's good to have like a darker blue, a lighter blue, a darker yellow, lighter yellow. Um, in addition to your black, white, and browns. So there's just a look of the ones that I use most frequently. So I also have these Derwent Metallic watercolor pencils. I love these. They will add a really nice creamy pop of color. They're bright. They're kind of like the Derwent Ink Tents. They ha add a pop of color, but they also have like a shimmer to them. So. My favorites are that like greenish color. It's like an aqua green. And then there's a purple and a blue, uh, but there's also like the silver and copper. It's a very beautiful set. I love them. They're my favorite for like eyes and lips. I'll also, uh, this is if you're looking for a less expensive alternative for watercolor pencils, I use these occasionally. They're they have, the color doesn't always turn out after you seal them, the color tends to change a little bit, but they actually work pretty well on the sealant and their, uh, their Prismacolor watercolor pencils. So it's a good, less expensive alternative. Just wanted to share those. Um, here's my favorite, my pan pastels. I used to use a variety of different uh, high quality pastels. But I've since turned to these pan pastels. They have, uh, they're, they go on nice and creamy, high pigment, and uh, they're just a dream to work with. Easily accessible. They're not as messy. Pastels are always messy, so they are a little bit powdery, but they are a lot less messy than your other pastels. I just love them. So over on the left, you can see there's some of, I have a pearlescent set. So those, that is the red and the green and yellow. There's a black pearlescent. And then on the right, I have some of like the different skin tones or, or earth tones, if you will. And then some terracotta and red. I use the, all of these. I, I've been asked what I use most frequently and I guess all of these like earth tones and then my colorless blender, which I love and the black and white. The pearlescents I don't use so much, but I have used all of them at some point. So I just love the pan pastels. The uh, There's several different sets you can buy. I've bought some on blitzy.com as well as Amazon and uh, Dick Blick. So these are some I've blend, I've kind of made a custom blend in a couple of different blush colors and a couple of different uh, like earthy tones just to get more of a variety on the skin colors and so I've just kind of shaved in some into these extra pans that they give you with the tools and so I use those kind of f pretty frequently I've just mixed there some like terracotta color or burnt sienna and some of the peach so I use those pretty often. Here's my little cigar box of pastels. These are, a lot of these are old from when I used to go to like art school and then I used um, pastels to do like landscapes and stuff, but these are my old pastels. So I have some that are Rembrandt, some Schmanke, and then some Sennelier. I know I'm just brutal, brutally tearing up those names, how to say those, but those are the main 
types I used and I use that sandpaper to just use as a palette. I also have these tiny little shrinky samples. So as you can see they're just very messy and oh, I also have this pack of Derwent's. This was a gift to me from a friend who's uh, mother used to be an artist and she gave me her old art supplies so I use those every once in a while especially the reds I like to have a variety of reds so if you wanted some inex more less expensive options there's uh, I use these on occasion if I'm just looking for a color that I just cannot put together or can't find this gray set is really great to have a variety of grays the uh, this is kind of a looks like a maybe a Japanese vintage set has some really neat soft colors this new pastel these are very hard these are more for use use on paper but they uh, they do have this huge variety of colors so every once in a while if I need some a color that I just can't find in my pan pastels or my other pastels I'll resort to this but this I would normally reserve for just a drawing. As you can see, the variety of colors there is just beautiful though. They just don't tend to work as well. They're not as soft. Um, these are these Weber Costellos. They're very old, but they are they are softer. They just aren't as pigmented. I think they have more filler in them. These are my beloved Carandosh Museum Aqua Rels. I use those sparingly, but those are my favorite watercolor pencils for face ups. If you're just looking to splurge and you want the best, get those. <laughs> this is my little kit of pearl or little shimmer powders. This Ranger Perfect Pearls is my favorite. I just got this one kind of recently. And I think I showed that in kind of a haul video and and but I have a set of five I bought that a white one individually because it's clear and you can use it just over any color it's turned out to be my favorite I also use these uh, Pearl X brand and that's flamingo it's one of my favorites it's a beautiful pink but this is a set I bought that has a ton of just really great colors. It's got two blues, a purple, a copper, a gold. So those are just really great shimmer powders. Just know that if you're not using that clear one, that it's going to add some color, it almost like a pastel to the face up. So if you don't want a color, you'll just you can just add that pearlescent shimmer powder clear. This is my box of eyelashes. So I have a ton of eyelashes. Most recently I bought these from a company called Chocolate Handmade on Etsy. I bought a bunch of different colors from her. They are BG, B, ball jointed doll eyelashes. So they have that, they're a lot tinier than my other lashes, but these others are just a variety that I buy like on Amazon or wherever I see a pair that I like. And this is Namian's uh, BJD glue and that's found on Etsy as well. And so these are just like I've, I found on Amazon. Some of them are supposed to be like bottom lashes, like for humans, which makes them a little bit shorter. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and it was helpful. If you did, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching and subscribe if you haven't already. Have a great day. Bye.